Hey, my name's Charlie Petrie. I'm a square dance caller, and I've decided to start a square dance uh, podcast with some of my friends and some people I don't know. Uh, my first season one, episode one, is this one. I'm going to open with one of my closest, probably my closest friend in square dancing, and his name is Sean Butler. He's on the screen with me, and Sean Butler is uh, currently from Georgia, Atlanta, Kennesaw area. I'm going to let him tell you about himself, and uh, we're just going to have a little conversation about it, and I appreciate you joining us. Sean, take it away, buddy. Hey, thanks, Charlie. Glad to be uh, on the podcast. Awesome idea. Um, Yeah, I'm from Ackworth, Georgia, uh, via the New Jersey Turnpike. Uh, I've been in Georgia 18 years now. I was relocated um, from my job, uh, UPS, which I've been with uh, 34 years now. Um, And fortunately, uh, one of the great things about coming to Georgia was being introduced to the uh, world of square dancing. My only only exposure before uh, uh, coming down to Georgia was a Bugs Bunny cartoon. Um, so that's all I knew about square dancing. I, I have seen that. I have seen that cartoon. Yes, yeah. I have. <laughs> and uh, so you never know where life leads you. And, um, you know, it's just uh, one, one of the beautiful things about moving down here. And, um, yeah, I started um, started dancing 2010. So, wow, it's 12, 13 years already. And um, it, it was funny because my, my wife um, was given a flyer. They were recruiting for classes, like next door neighbor. Hey, come check it out. And she went the first night. She went to open house. And then the the next week she said, hey, this is pretty cool, actually. You know, uh, I'd love for you to do it with me, but I I understand if you don't want to do it. But but at the very least, come watch and see what I'm going to be doing because I'm going to be doing this for the next, you know, 25, 30 weeks or whatever. Like, okay, okay. So I go there, Kennesaw Square Dealers in in Kennesaw, Georgia. Ray Monty was the uh, caller at the time. And um, I got there. I had my jacket on. I was just sitting in the corner. And I was like, okay, I'll be here for like 10 minutes, see what this silliness is all about. And then I'm out of here. Sat down, they started the music. And then Pat Tumlin, um, senior member of the club, right? One of the longtime, lifetime members comes over and said, okay, uh, sorry, we're, uh, we're going we're gonna to start now. So you're going to be my partner. I said, no, I appreciate that, ma'am. I'm just here to watch my wife. I'm probably going to be here for, you know, five, 10 minutes. I'm going to be out of here. Nope, everybody's got to, everybody's got to come on up. Everybody's got to come up. You can't sit there and watch. I said, I really appreciate that, ma'am. You're really nice. And she said, take your jacket off and get up. You're my partner. Okay. (laughs) And I got out there and the first 15, 20 minutes, I was like, okay, this isn't that bad. And Charlie, I tell you, by the end of the night, by the end of those two hours, I was sold. I was sold. I was like, this, this is like the best kept secret in the world and i could not wait for that next class to start mm-hmm. and i was like let's let's get through this it, it was just magic now, how long how long have you been so, what, when did you start the dancing part of it uh september 2010 so yeah 30 and, years. And, and so you've been calling since then how many how, what percentage do you think of the stories you've heard of couples getting into it is my wife went and drew me in and then the husband becomes the one that says, hey, we're still yeah. we're going to keep going to this. It, it's something that the, the wife is always the first interest. The guy's like, nah, it's not for me. And then all of a sudden the guy's like, you know, he's pulling his wife. Come on. We got to go back. We got to go back. So that, that's yeah. a great story. And, and that, that's that's kind of where I was. Uh, my in-laws actually got my wife and I involved years and years ago. And same thing. And my wife's kind of, you know, shied away from it at this point, And I'm head over heels with it so i'm as locked in as you are <laughs> so that's all so you start dancing and ray Monty, uh of course uh we have a connection there that's where we met actually is at kennesaw um ray's passed away now he passed away a few years ago um phenomenal guy um and so he gave you your start in calling he did he did um you know how after, after that happen? after well after going through about a year of the lessons right i learned mm-hmm. mainstream learn plus as as a dancer I looked up there and I saw Ray the way he was just kind of, you know, mesmerizing the crowd. Mm-hmm. And what really hooked me that first night was that he ended the night with a singing call. And I was like, wait, what? What? Do you, you can do this to like popular music? I, I was all in. And, you know, I, I, lo- I love Ray's singing calls and, and all of his singing, uh, you know, patter and calling in general. And so after about a year, I said, hey, um, so how hard is it? Is it as hard as it looks? He's like, you right. sure you, sure you want to do this? I'm like, ah, you know, let, let's uh, let, let's give it a shot. And then, you know, a bunch of us actually at the time were, were, were learning to call. And, yeah. uh, you know, uh, it, it was it was so daunting yeah. uh, to 
try to, to try to figure this out, figure out the maze. And, and, you know, he's like, just start off with singing calls. I'm like, well, I don't even sing well to begin with, but, but okay. And then the patter, he, and Bray, he was great. He would, he would email like every day, like, like mm. a page of his notes. He was just like downloading, you know, his, his brain was a computer and he was downloading all of that information for us. And, you know, just little by little started building there until um got comfortable to start doing, you know, a, a tip here or there. And then, you know, branching out and do, doing kind of like half dances or dances on Sunday afternoons. Well, I don't know if I've told you this or not, but if not for you, I probably would not be called. I think, I don't know if I've ever mentioned this to you, I don't think so. but I was sitting, we used to sit on the front of the stage with Ray yeah. um, in between tips when there was uh, queuing going on rounds and all that stuff. And I heard you at the end of a dance talking to Ray and he said he was going to email you right. the modules. And so I, I'm not making this up, Sean. I thought I told you this before, but I went to Ray and I said, what are y'all talking about? And he said, well, Sean wants to learn to call. So I sent him, e I emailed him a module every now and then. And I said, well, can you do that to me? Because I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have had the nerve. I wouldn't have just gone up and said, Hey, teach me how to call. So when I heard him talking to you and uh, Dan, uh, because mm -hmm. Dan was kind of starting at that time too. Um, that's what got me into it. And so then Ray was like, sure, if that's what you want. And so he started sending me a few modules here and there and saying, Hey, here, learn a singing call, go learn a singing call, come back, let you sing. So you believe it or you are a big part of me being a square dance caller. I, I will not, I will never tell my wife that. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Now Ray, Ray you're so like, deep. Yeah. Ray, Ray, so Ray deep was, so, God. Ray was so great to us. And, um, you know, I remember when we were starting out, we were going to, uh, you know, an, another, club members home on Sunday right, afternoon right, right. They'd, they'd clear out Randy and Patty Farris they'd clear yeah. out their their furniture for us and we, we would practice there and uh, I remember the first time you were there and I, I you know barely knew you just as a club mm -hmm. member we'd been in squares together but I didn't really know you and right. um, you know your turn came around and you did a singing call jambalaya mm -hmm. and I was like who the heck is this guy <laughs> you like you you like blew the roof off of that living yeah. room in that house and I was like Really, that this is what I got to compete against now. And I, I, almost just, I, I almost called it a day right there, but I'm like, you know, you actually, you know, motivated yeah. me. Like, okay, you want to, you know, hang with these guys and gals. You got to, you got to pick up your game. So that you were awesome. your inspiration for me there. Yeah, and I remember that going to Randy and Patty's. They'd move everything out. We had one square of folks and maybe another couple sitting there waiting to jump in. And we would do singing calls and we would play with Patter the best we could because we were, I mean, we were as green as you could be um when it came to doing patter and i'm i would love to have recorded something there i've never we never recorded anything at patty and randy's house uh, i can't imagine what the patter sounded like back then uh, so what level do you call to now yeah mainstream and plus yeah. okay good so, good, good. Uh, you know you, 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 is that where you dance you don't dance any higher than that no yeah okay yeah, yeah I've, I've done advanced i've done advanced lessons from beginning to end twice and since there's not a whole lot of clubs in this area just like with every other level, I don't dance anymore. So now I walk in there and somebody says, motivate. I don't know. I, I don't, I know that's a plus call. I mean, that's an advanced call, but I don't know it. So, yeah. um, I tell so, my dancers, they don't have anything to worry about with me trying to call advanced because I can't even spell a one or a two. <laughs> <laughs> don't even get me to the C's. So, um, you, you do, you, you've got a club, you do club dances and you do you, myself and, you, we've both done a couple of one night parties, uh, mm -hmm. parties with live bands and all that. Um, do you have any funny stories, anything that's happened, whether it be a club dance or uh, a one nighter or anything like that? Just something that, uh, that sticks out in your mind. <laughs> the one nighters are, are, are really fun. The party dances because, you know, usually the people there, like they had zero exposure to, to square dancing mm -hmm. or, or, you know, very little, Hey, you know, I did it back in, you know, elementary school. You hear that all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I've never so heard like, that story about yeah, elementary right? school. Yeah. And so, you know, it's good to kind of see them and there's, there are people hesitating and everything, but then, you know, once, once you teach them the basics and once you drop the needle on that, right. Uh, drop the needle on an MP3 file, they're mm -hmm. good to go. And uh, they, they have a blast and that's so rewarding. And, you know, even if they, you know, if it doesn't, you know, lead to them joining a club. They they still had a great night out. And we've we've shared our activity with them. There was one time though, um, and never again, never again. Um, there was a it was a sixth to eighth grade kind of dance, 
And it was at a school gymnasium. I'm picturing in my mind driving over. Okay, it's going to be like, you know, 20 kids. And, you know, hopefully some of the adults there will corral them. And, you know, we'll, we'll get we'll get through this. I got there, Charlie. And I, I kid you not, there were 175 kids. No kidding. 175 kids. Utter chaos. Not even organized chaos, just plain chaos. So I'm trying to square these kids up, getting help from the adults. Never like, done a square dance with that many people, and you yeah, get that many. Nah, seven nah, I'm, I'm trying to square up uh, <laughs> all, all these kids, you know, and fill a gymnasium. So that was like 25 minutes in. I was trying to square them up. I got right. the same same, same uh, music looping in behind. It's like driving everybody nuts. And then so try a segment for like 10 minutes. And, you know, first couple of squares get it. But then, like, you know, the deeper you go back into the Hang on, he froze up there. You still got me on the signal? How about now? Yeah, I got you now. Looks, looks like we're better. Yeah, we're better. so it, it, it was it was uh, it was chaos and after 10 minutes, I like said to the, the organizer, I said, this is just not, we're just not going to be able to do this for the next 90 minutes. He said, just, um, just, just play some music and, and, and let them go out there again. So the kids were like requesting modern day music. Like I had yeah. heard half the artists would like bring it up on uh, YouTube and play it through my speakers. And I was like, I, I, that night could not end uh, fast enough. But, uh, but, that, but, but one nighters in general, that was the exception to the rule. One nighters yeah. and party nights in general are, are very fun and rewarding. That's good. That's good. So we have our ups, we have our funny times. Looking back, and I, I relate things to stand-up comedy, things like that. If you had to pick out a tip. Now, in square dancing, a tip is, if you don't know, a tip is basically four, five, six minutes of patter and then a singing call. So about 10 to 12 minutes. Um, if you had to name a bomb one time that you just fell apart, and I, we all have stories of, of many times of falling apart, yeah. what one sticks out in your head? Yeah, so how much time do we have? I don't know. I don't know. Go right ahead. <laughs> one, one that if, if somebody says, man, when did you really well, just blew? It's, 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 this is like embarrassing. I guess this, I would categorize this as, you know, like really embarrassing. And if there's other callers watching this, they're, they're just going to be shaking their head that's at me and saying, you know, you could have done this or that. But no, so, they've all done it. They've all done it. They won't admit it, but they've all done it. Go right ahead. But, Let me hear so, it. So, I mean, you know, Ray taught me, uh, Dan Mitchell, another mentor of mine, taught me, listen, I don't care how good you think you're going to get. Always write down at least one, you know, number one couple, number four couple. Just just put it in your L's. So, you you know, if you forget, you can look down and do that. So, have my square picked out, um, you know, head down, write, writing it down. Okay, Bob and Marilyn, my number one couple. couple wonderful couple. Like, come to almost every dance mm -hmm. at Kennesaw Square Daily. So, I start, you know, getting into it. And, uh, you know, I'm sighting and I'm moving around pretty good. I'm like, all right, I think it's going to be time to resolve. So let me uh, let me pair up Bob with Marilyn. And, and I'm trying, Charlie. And it's like, I'm like, you know, circulating, trading. I'm, I'm doing every trick in the book and like nothing. Like, how how am I not pairing up Bob and Marilyn? What is going on? What is wrong with me? And out of the corner of my eye, I see on the sideline sitting down, Marilyn. You're all sitting so, down. Sitting down. And I so so in the time that I put my head down to write down my number one of four couple, Marilyn had given up her spot to let another lady mm -hmm. dance with Bob. And I was just like, oh my goodness. I I'm glad I looked over, otherwise I would still be trying to resolve them years later. <laughs> it, it was just so embarrassing. It was funny, but it was embarrassing. Oh, that's and, awesome. you, know, so that's awesome. you know, and yeah, never again. And then then I write down multiple squares. <laughs> Oh, no, everybody has one of those, and they got lots of them. Um, but the fact that they weren't even in the square, that's a good one. Usually I get out there, and I'll write them down. And I, if, I don't know, if I'm at a, a club that I don't know or whatever, I will write down um, number one couple, red shirt, red shirt. Number two couple, blue shirt, yellow skirt. And then music starts, boom, 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 I'm going along. And then I realize that there's a third red shirt in there. Nice. And I'm like, oh, I don't know anybody. So – at least mine are in the square. So you got me on that. Yours wasn't even in the square. So you never found that. Um, so when you get outs and everything like that and the get outs, how you get to the corner, how you uh, resolve, what, what do we think your favorite call? Plus mainstream, just what stands out to you as your favorite call? 
Yeah, you know, I, I like the surprise get outs and you gotta you gotta be used those sparingly, right? You don't mm-hmm. want people to start start guessing and like uh, you know, when you were over um the other night at Kennesaw and we were we were doing a couple of duets together at the end. I, I like one in, in a singing call where essentially it's uh we'll call it we'll get this so I can go through it, right? It's a uh, mm-hmm. you know, square through, swing through, boys run, Ferris wheel, centers do a right and left through, centers do a half sachet and swing, pause. The one behind you right, gets right. them every time. Gets them every time. So like, you got to do that maybe you know once every couple of yeah, months. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, that's a good one. And I let and, and patter, um, and you know it's a little, little bit of a sophisticated setup to get there. But the end result is a zoom into a right and left grand. Right. right? So you, you have a you know let's say the two and four couples paired in the center, and then you have the one and three split up, but they're half sashayed out right. on the outside. They call zoom, and it's it's got to be quick, right? And then. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times catch them by surprise. And I'll, I'll try to coach them like, hey, this is going to be quick. Get ready. Zoom, right, left, grand. And it's yeah. like, you know, whoa. But again, you can't yeah, and, do that every time. As long as, and if you don't do it often, dancers are not going to pick up on it. Um, right. you know, a lot of callers that are dancing wouldn't see it coming um, yeah. because they don't like, is this something that's not expected? Yep. Yep. So, and and I, I will tell you, can I, can I tell you my favorite name? Yeah, oh, call? absolutely. Yeah. I, I love the names for these calls. It's like, I have no idea about the origin, but my favorite name is Box the Mat. Boxing that, absolutely. Like, 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 who came up with that genius? Love the name of that. And you know what? The only time I use boxing that is when I have to get out of half sachet. Um, no other reason do I call boxing that. And I, I should call it more, but I don't. Um, but I just, that was one thing Ray told me. He was like, if they're half sachet and you can't get them out, just box the net. And they're good. And, you know, you go right and left through whatever you want to go from there. So in the, from for you and myself, um, we would be uh, third graders when it comes to calling to some of the callers that we know that have been calling for 30, 40 years. Um, but right now, what do you consider yourself a, a memory module site? How, if you go up to a dance, how do you prepare for that? What, what do you, what do you do? Well, yeah, I mean, it's a combination, you know, with the pattern of, of memory and sight. Mm-hmm. And, and I remember asking Ray, um, probably shortly after he started pumping all those emails over to me. Yeah. I said, listen, Ray, you know, I'm not 20 years old. Um, I would like to get at least 1% good where I can kind of get through a tip and, right. you know, I don't get booed off the stage, uh, things like that. And he said, he's like, listen, um, this isn't popular opinion. He, he flat out told me, he said, but you need to memorize as many modules and zeros as you can. You may not even understand what I'm telling you right now, mm-hmm. but start doing that build your memory bank and then work in the site. Right. So, and I, and I still, I'm, I'm still building and building to this day. Um, you know, and, and I, I like to tell people if they say, Hey, where, where do you think you are in your calling career? And I, I say like, you know, with anything it's crawl, walk, run. I think I'm probably in the walking stage now. I was in yeah. the crawling stage for a while. Well, one, of the, one of these days I like to get to the running stage, but um, you know, I just got to kind of know where you're at and try not to do too much, yeah. but yeah, a combination of, uh, you know, memory and, and sight, um, you know, when I'm, when I'm going through the pattern. Yeah. It, it's helpful to know, uh, if you have a club, which you do, um, know your dancers and if they don't sit down on you while you're writing stuff down. But, um, so that helps with the site, but yeah, you have to have, and, and you don't have to have a great memory. I don't. Um, but I've got a handful of modules that I can get into and then get out of. Um, so I understand that completely. Um, so when you're, when you're setting up for a dance mm-hmm. in it's mainstream and plus, and you got rounds in the middle and all that, what, what do you go in thinking? I mean, minus a theme, if there's a theme, yeah, I get it. And I will say this, you're one of the best theme people I've ever seen. Oh, thank um, you. um, when it comes to, Hey, Sean, we're going to do this kind of dance. You are from first tip to last tip on the theme. And, uh, you know, you're hundred percent in, and that's great. A lot of callers will, that first tip will be, hey, here, here's a Beach Boys song for your beach theme. And then the next song is ACDC, which I love ACDC. But still, you know, you keep to the theme and that's great. So if somebody says, hey, we're just doing a dance next week, Mainstream Plus, on, you know, probably five squares. Mm-hmm. How do you go into that? Yeah, well, I mean, it. I, I keep a log of everything. I've ever done going back to uh, what, what we uh, practice in Brandy and Patty's living room. Yep. Right. And, and, and that's just, you know, when you're doing the club calling, um, you know, twice a month, we dance first and third Fridays typically. 
right? So it's like, okay, I, I can't really do what I did last week. But even if I, if I like, okay, hey, I, uh, you know, at your club in Calhoun, Cherokee Promenaders, they want me to call a dance. Uh, I'll look back like, okay, I did something nine months ago there. What did I do? Try to keep it fresh. So I, yeah. so I go in, right? So it's, it's keeping it fresh. So, um, you know, at any time, like, like, you know, once one dance ends, I start preparing for the next dance. So right. what, what singing calls am I going to use? I, I never use any of the singing calls, back-to-back dances, themes or no themes, right? Um, and, and it's quite rare that I would actually repeat any singing calls over a six-month period. There's just so much good music awesome. yeah. out there, right? Um, you know, and then then it's I take it to, the, I think, the next level. Uh, and then a, lot, a lot of times this is to my detriment because, you know, timing com- becomes an issue a lot of times. But, like, mm-hmm. If, if I plan for five singing calls, right? So you have four figures in each singing call. I'm planning for 20 different figures. That, that's, planning. Now, whether that actually happens. That, that, life, right, but that is an absolute rarity, brother. I will yeah, say that right now. That's yeah. impressive. And, you know, I, I figure trying to give people as much variety uh, as uh, as possible. And then you also have to have to be, um, you know, cognizant of the, the opens, the breaks, and the closes, mm. right? So you know you don't want it. i've been to dances where it seems like i've danced 15 uh, grand squares absolutely right? yeah no, that, that's something you, and dancers not now some dancers will say that to you but you've got to be aware of that you can't open you know it, especially if you like singing and i do the side space grand square or the head lady center teacup chain is perfect for singing um but you can't do it every time you got to right. pick the songs you wanted on another than that. It's whatever men start right, element left, wh- whatever. Um, yep. So, yeah, no, you're, and, and I've been around you long enough. This is why I'm glad you're number one on my podcast. Um, Cause I know a good bit about you. Um, you prepare like nobody I've ever seen. And I've seen a few callers at this point. And um, so that being said, you're really good at just preparing it. So you, you, Back a long time ago, we had a thing, or you had a thing called Klein Time. Tell me real quick about that. Klein Time, that was really, really helpful in my development as a caller. So there was this Western Ware place um, in in Ackworth owned by Pete and Penny Klein. And he actually had the idea, you know, to bring people in to buy Western Ware stuff. Hey, why don't I bring some uh, square dancers in? Let's have Sean call for two, sometimes three hours on a Sunday afternoon. It seemed like there was no air conditioning a lot of times. You're on concrete. I don't think there was. I remember <laughs> there was no air conditioning. Right. And like there's, it, it was not only was a Western wear store, but it was like kind of like everything else imaginable that yeah. like, like, you know, like, you know, VCR parts from 1978. If you needed, you needed a Betamax, go to Pete's, right? Yes. So uh, they, they had everything there. So that, that was really, um really helpful in, in my development because I was able to try things. The, the dancers were, you know, very forgiving. They were there to kind of, kind of help um, themselves. Like, oh, this is extra practice for us. Yeah, so we it it made them better. It really did. Yeah, I, we I spent a lot of time out there. It really did. Yeah, yeah. We, we were, we were all in together. So, you know, I was able to kind of like, okay, let's try this type of pattern. Let's see how much I can, how much I've memorized for this. And if I, if I yeah. mess up in the middle, okay, then I'm going to try to sight out of it and see, see how well I do there. And uh, it really helped build my confidence. So when I would do the guest tips at Ray's um, or any of the other, places in in the area whether that was um you know uh, john norris at, at cherokee squares or, uh, squares up in silver stars in uh, in lawrenceville things like that i was yeah. i was a lot more comfortable and you know it was, um you know you mentioned klein time and you know you, back in the in the crawl stage it was it was there there were some tough times it's like man i'm putting so much work into this but i, I just i don't know if i'm cut out for this 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 is this is tough this is a lot of work um and, and I just didn't know if I'm long for this. And I remember one time, a sweaty Sunday afternoon, was packing up my equipment, right. and a dan- dancer came up to me and she said, "Hey, just between you and me, I just want you to know that your Sunday dances at client time are the best two hours of my week." No kidding. And I was like, "Okay." And I, and I hear that in my head every day and every time I get ready for dance, and that motivates me to this day. And and I'll, and I'll never forget that. That's awesome. So Ray Monty was a big part of our beginnings, for sure. Um, uh, any other callers jump out to you as really giving you a heads up, uh, a step up on everybody or where you are right now? Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, folks that, that give me guest tips over, over the years, so whether that was um, John Norris or uh, Clyde Couch, 
Mm -hmm. Ronnie Langley, right, right, folks like that. Um, but you know, I mentioned them a little while ago, Dan Mitchell, who is, um, you know, legendary caller, right. and he, he calls for the wheel arounds now, right? He used to also call for peach tree squares. I don't think they're in existence anymore. Yeah, they, they sold it, yeah. yeah, unfortunately. But, um, let me, let me tell you about Dan. So, um, you know, he took a bunch of us new callers, it was me, it was Dan Markwood, it was Al and Julia Smith, um, Curtis Smith, no relation, Ronnie yep. Langley. Uh, a, a couple other brothers and he said you know i got this place down uh, by the airport um, where they dance and we can go there sunday afternoons in hateville right ha hateville by the airport and, and we I, I eventually dubbed us the uh, hateville hopeful nice. right and um i and it was like i don't know 40 50 sunday afternoons in a row he, he would teach us and, and break it down put us in these real life yeah. situations and he'd give us homework and i hate homework but he would give no, homework. That, yeah, that, no. that, 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 but it was purposeful. But I and see Dan now. He gives me homework if I'm talking see? about something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But 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 you know, it it was well worth it. And and the thing about it, like you know, he he didn't want anything. He just yeah. wanted us to work hard. And you know, he he just wanted to kind of keep the, uh, you know, do his part to keep the activity right. going because he loved it so much. And you know, the stuff. My goodness, like this. I'll get in situations right now, and I'll have people half sashayed or you know. And, you know yeah, and, and you know, hopefully I don't get into like situations where it's three and one on one side, and, and but but like he taught us, like hey, you know, use your half tag the lines, use your tag the lines, you know, mm -hmm. face in, and you know, don't panic. He's like, you know, I remember him saying, well, what do you like to what resolve from you know, a box one four or, or a one piece two p line? Well, what what's what's your what's your um, you know preference? And I'm like, uh, box one p. I mean box one four. And he's like, no, the answer is anything. Yep. anything because you are in control up up there you, you know you run the show right yep. so you need to be comfortable and just those those little things and i mean it just comes into play every time i'm calling like oh there's dan on one shoulder there's ray on the other shoulder yep. right? so, yeah, and there's a lady at client time telling you it's the best two hours of a day that's right that's right and then Pete so we, sell, sell me a vcr we got about three minutes left on, okay i think i get 30 minutes on zoom for what i have favorite singing call if you can get it down to one i, I i'm not going to get it down to one uh but i'll, I'll put because there's so much if, good music if you go to if you walk in somebody says hey do a guest tip for me sean what do you yeah. pull and it's some place you've never been so they yeah. it's not something you're repeating what do you pull boy tough one uh but i think my go-to one for the last uh eight, eight or nine years because i love singing it so much and it gets the crowd going is uh and it's it is the most least traditional square dance singing call um, of all time is Donna Summer's Hot Stuff. I, okay, yeah, I've heard <laughs> you do it. It's a fantastic song, absolutely. Yeah, and um, I you know I, there's so much pattern music out there. Uh, I won't get into that. I mean, because you have traditional banjos, fiddles, and you have the new stuff coming out on these other labels. It's just phenomenal. Um, so tell us what what what's, what's your schedule look like? What do you do calling? What do you got coming up? Yeah, so um, I'm teaching a class right now every Thursday night. We just started. It's a, it's a plus class, so either a refresher for most mm -hmm. folks, but there are some folks who've never had it before, and we're going into um, class number three this Thursday night. Okay. And we're back at it um, with a club dance at Kennesaw Square Dealers. Uh, when do you all dance at Kennesaw? Yeah, Kennesaw at a Ben Robertson Center, 2753 Watts Drive. And what, what is, which, which Fridays is that? First and third? Second first, first and third. Okay. Um, Sometimes that varies depending on the available All right. calls. Before we get shut down, let me say this. Um, uh, you have also one of the finest YouTube channels oh, yeah. that I've seen. Yeah. So, Sean Butler, YouTube. S. Butler. Right? And, and S. Butler. S. Butler, S. Butler uh, YouTube. You, you, you document and keep track of things better than anybody I've ever seen, too. You were the one of the most organized people I've ever met, <laughs> which is huge for square dance calling. Um, just to, to keep track of everything that's going on. So uh, definitely check out you on YouTube, S. Butler. Uh, you don't do much on, you don't do anything on Facebook, really, right? No, I'm, I'm the last one. Okay, and, I, and you might look at Instagram on occasion. So that's kind of my realm where I kind of put that in. So Sean, thank you, brother. I'm glad you were number one. You're number one for me. We started together, and one day we'll end together. Who knows? We'll have our own retirement dance. They'll come and you know do a honorary dance for us. Um, brother, I appreciate it, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. 
Thank you. Good luck with the show. Awesome. All right, Sean. Absolutely. I'll talk to you soon, buddy. Take care.